Hey everyone, this video will be exploring the combustion reaction of alcohols. Like all combustion reactions, alcohol combustion is also exothermic, and thus it releases energy. On the molecular level, this is because more energy is released than absorbed during the combustion of one molecule of alcohol. What this means is that energy absorbed when breaking the carbon to carbon single bonds and the carbon to hydrogen bonds is less than than the energy released or produced from the formation of carbon to oxygen double bonds and oxygen to hydrogen single bonds in carbon dioxide and water respectively. For each additional carbon atom and hydrogen atom added, the enthalpy change of combustion becomes more negative. This means more energy is released per alcohol molecule as the size of that molecule gets larger. So the enthalpy of combustion increases with the size of molecule. Let's look at the energy involved in bond breaking and bond formation more quantitatively. The breaking of C, C bond and CH bond requires the absorption of these two amounts of energy. Every time we add a carbon atom to the alcohol, one additional carbon single bond needs to be broken and two additional CH bonds needs to be broken. That adds up to 347 and 826 kilojoules per mole of energy that's additionally required every time we add an additional carbon atom to the molecule. What about bond formation? Now, every time we add a carbon atom, we form an additional molecule of carbon dioxide. And in one molecule of carbon dioxide, we are forming two new C double O bonds, each one releasing 746 kilojoules of energy per mole. At the same time, we are also forming one additional molecule of water, which again contains two additional OH bonds, each one releasing 464 kilojoules of energy. By doing the maths, as you can see, for every new carbon atom in the alcohol, we are releasing far more energy from bond formation than what's being absorbed in bond breaking. This is why the enthalpy change increases with the size of the alcohol molecule. This table shows you the heat of combustion, that is the enthalpy change of the first eight linear alcohols. And as you can see down the table, the magnitude of enthalpy change becomes larger. If you've watched the video on hydrocarbons as fuel sources, you will realize that both alcohols and hydrocarbons are used as fuel. The difference, however, is that alcohol contains oxygen in its molecule, whereas hydrocarbons do not. Thus, the partial oxidation of alcohols means it requires less oxygen for complete combustion, which in turn also means it is less likely to undergo incomplete combustion. Let's take a look at the comparison between ethanol and butane combustion. A molecule of ethanol requires three oxygen molecules for complete combustion, whereas a molecule of butane requires roughly 13 over 2, which is 6.5. The fact that butane requires more molecules of oxygen per mole of combustion means it is more likely for it to undergo incomplete combustion due to the insufficient supply of oxygen. The amount of heat energy produced by combusting alcohols can be measured by determining the temperature change of a volume of water that's absorbing the heat from the combustion reaction. The enthalpy change of a particular alcohol can be measured by using this simple experimental setup. The alcohol is placed into a spirit burner and is lit with a match to start the combustion reaction. On top of the burner, we have a beaker containing a volume of water placed on top of a gauze mat as well as a tripod stand. We then use a the thermometer to measure the temperature increase of the water as a result of the heat that's being produced by the alcohol combustion. In this experiment, we are making a very large assumption, and that is we are assuming the heat released by the burner, that is a combustion of alcohol, is fully absorbed by the water, that is there's no heat loss. Thus, if we can measure the change in temperature of the water, along with the mass, which is, should be known, we can calculate the heat that's being absorbed. And this is the heat that's been produced by the alcohol, by the assumption, and thus we can divide the heat produced 
apply the number of moles of alcohol that we used to calculate the enthalpy change of combustion. Let's talk about the validity, accuracy, and reliability of this experiment. Whether the experiment is valid or not depends on its aim. If you're trying to use that experimental setup to measure the actual enthalpy change, then the results will always be invalid. There are two reasons for this. Number one, incomplete combustion is fairly common when we're using a spirit burner due to the insufficient supply of oxygen. You will notice the presence of incomplete combustion by the formation of soot right under the gauze mat. Incomplete combustion produces less energy than complete combustion, which interferes with what you're measuring and thus the validity. More importantly, a substantial amount of energy, that is heat, produced by the burner is in fact not absorbed by the water. This means the experimental results that we measure will always be lower than the theoretical values of enthalpy change of a particular alcohol. However, if the experimental aim is to compare the enthalpy change, that is how much energy is produced from combustion between alcohols, then the results will be valid. Since larger alcohols will have a more negative or larger enthalpy change value, they will always produce more energy. This means the water in the beaker will absorb more energy and thus experience a higher temperature change. You can use the experimental setup to compare the differences in temperature changes amongst the different alcohols and thus be able to achieve your experimental aim, and that is to compare the enthalpy change between alcohols. In terms of accuracy, most of the time your experiment will be inaccurate, and this is predominantly due to the fact that most of the heat produced by the burner is lost to the surrounding. So the inaccurate results are mainly due to the invalid experimental method, that is, heat loss. There are a few ways you can improve the accuracy of the results. You can move the spirit burner closer to the gauze mat or the beaker to reduce the heat loss, since the smaller distance means heat will be more likely to be absorbed by the water before it is lost to the surrounding. You can also place an insulative heat shield around the setup, like the one shown in the diagram, to prevent heat from being lost to the surrounding yet again. Thirdly, you can wrap polystyrene, which is foam, around the beaker to reduce heat lost from the water. Despite the fact that this experiment can produce invalid and inaccurate results, they are typically reliable. Because if you do the experiment in the same way, in a consistent manner, without changing the method, you will produce numbers that are fairly similar and consistent, and therefore they are determined to be reliable.